fourth edition of Shaping the Cities, Forum for Sustainable Cities and Communities, takes place in New Orleans and reflects upon designing for the climate emergency. 90% of the urban areas are coastal, whereby 40% of the world population lives within 100 meters of the coast. This makes the built environment, the infrastructure and the people vulnerable to all kinds of climate change and extreme weather events. Shaping the City in New Orleans is seen as a research project to help build a powerful tool for redesigning our land and showcase how our cities could coexist with water while fostering a healthy, livable future. We bring together a group of diverse professionals in the field of design, architecture, planning and policy making. We aim to foster conversations, collaborations and actions in order to find solutions for the future of our cities. It's an amazing learning experience to be able to share what we're doing with others in a similar way and just understand the opportunities out there in the world. It's, just, it's a big world. I think there's a lot of different issues and challenges. There's a lot of different thinkers and leaders working in different ways. Shaping the City is an excellent venue for us to share and learn from one another. Shaping the city in New Orleans looks into three different subjects and three different topics this time. The first one is a comparison between Venice and New Orleans. We want to understand the differences, the commonalities, and the other similarities that exist between these two different low-lying cities that are facing extreme weather conditions. And the second discussion that we're going to have is titled Catalyzing Urban Climate Resilience. This panel looks into water-sensitive design, restorative solutions, waterfront regeneration, and other architecture and urban planning solutions that aim to bolster our cities against climate change. The third panel, titled Environmental Justice and Climate Change, looks into the displacement of people and the migration due to the climate emergency. In this panel, we are delving into the spatial justice, inequity, and social inclusion of people related to the climate change emergency. Venice and New Orleans have many things in common. They are both uh, port cities, water cities, they have been uh, built on uh, a lagoon or on uh, wetlands. And this means that uh, given the effects of the climate change, uh, living in the cities today is becoming more and more challenging. And for that, uh, we are reflecting on how both cities are investigating solutions in order not only to preserve the, the city itself, the infrastructure and its architecture, but also to make it possible for the people living in the cities to live in a, in a safe environment. We are in a, a liminal moment where the coastal cities of our continents are in a crisis. What are we going to do? How are we going to learn from each other? How are our leaders going to learn from us? Architects and engineers are the people that solve problems. What are we doing about the architecture? Because architecture is where our people live. It's where our culture lives. It's where we thrive and that provides safety and it provides shade, it provides economics, it provides everything for us. But we're not talking about that architecture yet. We're only talking about, okay, we have to save the coast. What are we gonna do about the architecture? What are we gonna do about our communities? How are we gonna ensure that they thrive in times of major stability and then in times of great instability? When the Agua Alta rises or when the hurricanes happen, right? How, what are we gonna do? Worldwide, uh, we are facing enormous challenges like climate change, very urgent, very complex, that uh, apart uh, a global response, we need also local action. It's absolutely essential to think about local culture. The life of a project belongs to the community that it's in, and so projects need to reflect those people. We need projects to be 
high performing and beautiful. We need projects to be based in science and imaginative and creative. There's space and room for both of those things in one place. I think there is opportunity and space for beauty uh, and creativity and imagination in every project and we shouldn't avoid that to ensure a project performs, but we should find solutions that, that do both and we seek to do that. Resilience is definitely, or, or climate change adaptation, or topics that necessitate engagement across disciplines. I think that a lot of us really have a deep intuition about what it means to be resilient, but for many members of communities that I've talked to and worked with, that term evokes some negative feelings because they feel like they're tired of being asked to be resilient. There are definitely positive examples of adaptations. It's just important that we keep questioning the planning processes that we have in terms of who is driving them, who is included, who are the beneficiaries of projects. Climate change is not having a direct impact on our world itself, but it's also having a multiplying effect on other dynamics, like migration, by increasing already existing dynamics. Also, there are many inequities in the way that our resources and environmental harms and risks are distributed, inequities in resources and capacities for coping. What I, I try and deal with in my work in terms of how we can have better solutions that are more equitable. Academia can play a fundamental role both in trying to better understand the problem that our society at world level and the local level is facing and also in dialogue with other stakeholders, policy makers and practitioners and the local communities, try and to understand which are possible solutions that can be put in place. I think that's the lesson here, is that the BNL and the ECC have provided the world with an opportunity and I'm just thrilled that it's being spotlighted on New Orleans.